class, it's Mr. Sargent here with your day 103 recap video for ELA and for science. Now in ELA today, we're gonna to continue our series of reading about inventors that help celebrate Black History Month. Today, we're talking about the incredible, amazing inventor, Patricia Bath. That's really gonna be interesting, especially for those that wear glasses. After that, we're gonna go right into science where today we're gonna to be talking about food chains. Now, I will tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, be prepared because there is, a, there is a quiz at the end of the video that you need to take. So, ladies and gentlemen, sit back, stay tuned, and let's start to learn. Now, almost all my life, ladies and gentlemen, I have had a problem with my eyesight. Um, growing up, I had to go to a special eye doctors to help me see a little bit better. And for the longest time, I stopped wearing glasses. Uh, it's recently that I have realized that in order to become a, a better version of Mr. Sargent and a better reader, it's important that if you're supposed to be wearing glasses, definitely, it's awesome to wear glasses. Now, one person in black history that really took this to heart and was really interested in helping people see better was an inventor by the name of Patricia Bath. Now, this woman definitely helped the world see a little bit more clearly. So, if for today's work, and you can find the link in the description below, we had a reading comprehension about Patricia Bath. So let's go ahead and read that together now. Dr. Patricia Bath was the first black woman medical doctor to receive a patent in the United States. She now holds four patents for her inventions, which are related to preventing and restoring sight in patients. Born in 1942, she was raised in, Har in the Harlem area of New York City. She was inspired early in her life by the work of Dr. Albert Schweizer, a medical missionary to Africa. She decided to study medicine. She graduated in 1968 from Howard University College of Medicine. Dr. Bath returned to Harlem as a medical intern. It was there that she saw that many poor people and black people were becoming blind because of the lack of eye care. She decided to concentrate on ophthalmology, which is the branch of medicine that works with eye disease and disorders. As her career progressed, Dr. Bath taught in medical schools and trained other doctors. In 1978, she was one of the founders of the American Institute for the Prevention of Blindness and served as its president. Its principle is that eyesight is a basic human right. In 1981, Dr. Bath invented a laser that could remove a cataract, which is a cloudiness in the lens of the eye. Cataracts are a leading cause of blindness. Her and other inventions also work with removing cataracts, making the removal faster, better, and safer. Dr. Bath is now retired from teaching. She continues her work to help all people see better. And I am definitely very thankful for Dr. Patricia Bath. Now, the next thing you're going to need to is take a look at these next five questions. Now, these are the questions you are going to answer for homework. Number one, where did Dr. Bath grow up? Two, who inspired Dr. Bath to become, to become, I should, should just say, to study medicine, okay? We can take out the word become out of that one. Number three, what is ophthalmology? Number four, how many patents does Dr. Bath have? And number five, what is a cataract? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am urging you, go back into the story. All of the answers are in the story. You just got to know where to find it. Good luck, and I cannot wait to see your answers. Now, in science today, we talked about one of my favorite topics. Uh, those that know me know that if I wasn't a teacher, well, I'd probably be a cook or a chef somewhere. I love food. I love food. And when you think about food and how great it is, the first question that I wanted to raise to all of you was, if you could have one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? For me, I think it has to be chicken. 
Think about all the different ways that there are to cook chicken. You could have a different chicken meal every single night. Plus, you know, a life without chicken nuggets would be kind of sad, wouldn't it? All right. Now, I raise that, raise that question to you. What is one food that you just couldn't live without, that you could eat every single day? Now, the reason why I ask this question is our lesson today is going to be about food chains. Now, if you don't know what food chains are, they are very easy to understand. Uh, but the big thing is to remember the word connection. Each part of a food chain is connected to the other. Think about what a chain is. And you can see right here, a chain is a connection of links, isn't it? Now, every part of the food chain is a connected link. So what we're going to do is go to the ScienceTron 10,000 and take a closer look and look at some examples of food chains that we see. So we're here with the ScienceTron 10,000 to hopefully understand just how food chains work. Now, as we talked about earlier, it's about connection, but it's more than that, ladies and gentlemen. When we're talking about a food chain, we're talking about how energy is moved. Because we know that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be moved from one thing to another. Now, you think about how you get your energy, and, well, you get most of your energy by, you guessed it, eating. Because, ladies and gentlemen, each one of you is part of a food chain. So as we look here, every single food chain starts with the sun. The sun gives energy to every living thing on earth. Now, there are some things that get more energy than others, okay? Now, the first step or second step in our food chain is producer. Go ahead and say producer. Very good. Now, if you ever forget what a producer is, just think of producers as plants. Plants have the ability to make their own food through photosynthesis. We have done many, many, many lessons on photosynthesis. But using the sun's energy, a plant is able to make its own food. Now, this is also one of the reasons why we say, hey, eat your greens, eat your salad, eat your vegetables. Because ladies and gentlemen, in a producer, we have the largest amount of energy that we can get from the sun. By eating plants, by eating vegetables, by eating fruit, we're able to gain all of that energy. And that's really good for our food, or our food chain. And well, it's good for us too. All right, now an animal that eats only plants is what we call a herbivore. Now we're not gonna get into this in this lesson, but we're gonna be talking a little, bit more, a little bit more about herbivores, omnivores, and carnivores in a future lesson. But it's important to realize that, well, if an animal like this grasshopper here only eats plants, are they getting, gaining a lot of energy? Yes, they are. They're gaining a ton of energy by eating the plant, but they don't gain all of it. In a future video, we're gonna talk about how energy can be lost in the food chain, all right? Now, the thing about this herbivore is it's pretty tasty. Now, you may not wanna eat grasshoppers. I think I ate a cricket in one of my videos last week. Delicious, but not something I'm gonna eat every day. But there are things that eat this grasshopper. Well, like our consumer here. Our lizard right here is going to eat the grasshopper and gain some energy. Now, as we know, it's not gonna gain all the energy, but just some. But we're gonna have this consumer right here eating. That's what food chain is all about. It's about eating and transfer of energy. But is this secondary consumer safe? No. What's gonna happen, ladies and gentlemen, is we have an apex predator. We have the top of the food chain, or the end of the food chain, depending on how you look at it. Now this predator, well, you don't see anything behind it, do you? Because nothing eats this predator. This is the last part of our food chain. This predator eats the consumer, which ate the herbivore, which ate the producer. 
Now, the thing about the predator is this, they always need to stay hunting. They always need to stay eating because, well, are they gaining a lot of energy? Not really. By eating this consumer right here, they're only gaining a bit of the energy, so they need to eat. We are the top of the food chain. We need to keep eating, don't we? We need to eat breakfast, lunch, and don't forget about dinner either. And snacks. Cannot forget about, forget about those snacks too. Now, since we are the top of the food chain, the energy that we get from food is going to keep us alive. It's going to keep us going. But because we can't make our own food like a producer or a plant, we have to keep eating to gain that energy. Now, there's one more question I have for you. If we take a look at this, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this, the power of the Sciencetron 10,000. What would happen if part of the food chain was, I don't know, missing? Let's say, for instance, our lizard population went down and all the lizards disappeared. How would that change our food chain? Well, we already know who's it gonna affect the most. Probably our predator. Now the predator has some choices. It could choose something else to eat or, well, it could become endangered or extinct. The population of the predators will go down because, well, they don't have any food to eat. Now in the same respect, what's gonna happen to our herbivore here? Well, you're right. Because the, this grasshopper has nothing hunting it, the population is going to go up, isn't it? We're gonna have more grasshoppers, aren't we? The key to a food chain, ladies and gentlemen, is balance, all right? We need herbivores, consumers, and predators to keep everything in nature balanced. Without it, well, we'd be overrun by grasshoppers, wouldn't we? Now, there's just not one example of a food chain. There are food chains in every ecosystem, every habitat, every living thing that eats is part of its own food chain. All right? Now, what you're going to do tonight is this. In the description below and on Google Classroom and on Class Dojo, I have put a link for a quiz. I want to see who out there, who maybe it's you, is paying attention. Now, there are four questions on this quiz, fairly easy, and each one of those questions was mentioned in this video. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you need to rewatch what we just did, go for it. If you need to rewatch yesterday's video, go for it. But I want you to do the best that you can do on this quiz. And once again, I cannot wait to see your answers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for day 103. Now, do not forget, you have two homework assignments tonight. You have the reading comprehension about Dr. Patricia Bath, as well as the food chain quiz, and both of which I cannot wait to see what information you make a connection with. All right. Once again, I want to thank everybody for being such an incredible class. Uh, families, if you're watching too, we couldn't do what we do without you. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being so incredible. And I can't wait to see each and every one of you tomorrow.